I was talking to Jay Z about Amsterdam, and you had some yeah. questions, right? You want to be talking to the government and stuff, and yeah, I want to know what's going on over here. How y'all get away with all this stuff? Like what stuff? <laughs> Weed in the coffee shops and girls in the window. <laughs> You're on a European tour right now. Yeah. How does it feel? Beautiful. Yeah. It's wonderful, man. Accept me everywhere I go. Um, people that don't speak English know all the words to my song, which is mm -hmm. still the most amazing thing to me in the world. Like, mm -hmm. like you don't speak English, but you know the whole song, like by heart. How? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. And yeah. what I, what I like to know is like, how do you, how do you experience that? Like going to all these countries and you see like people people's and heads embracing hip hop culture but adding their own interpretation to it and yeah. like you know people that don't speak English but they know the words of your song and the way they live hip hop but in a different in a different manner you know how do you experience that how do you see that I mean it's, it's a beautiful thing like for to start from New York City in the Bronx and then you know cross the all the way to Amsterdam to Germany and all the way over here and people just embracing it and loving the culture like we grew up loving the culture you know what I'm saying so I mean I'm, I'm ecstatic about that I'm happy about that so only thing like like what what I can say like in the offer advice is like for artists like coming up over here is that we did it off of the things that we experienced you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying so just do it off of the thing you experience. You gotta keep it, not keep it real yeah, because that's a saying. cliche. But mm -hmm. you gotta, you gotta. The way we live it. out here and yeah. the things we go yeah, through. Yeah, because that's what everyone's gonna relate to. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna relate to what we're doing over mm -hmm. over there because they don't know. They don't live that every day. Mm -hmm. That's what made hip hop so special. It's like a microcosm of society. Like well, what I talk about is what a lot of people go through, and that's 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 what you, that's what you call a good artist, someone mm -hmm. who can tell that story and bring. The most people mm -hmm. in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There's some deep lyrics in there where you're saying like, you talk about the making something out of nothing feeling. Yeah, but the whole thing, the whole I'm talking too much. Yeah, no, no. The it's whole cool. thing, <laughs> the whole thing about the renegade was it was supposed to be. My, I was talking to a reporter. If you listen to the whole thing, it's yeah, like you, you read know a what magazine that like, fucked up your day. Yeah, I can so I was doing an that interview. I, the, that whole the verse is that you know it's an interview. You know what I'm saying? So I was just really breaking down like what's going on in the hood, like. You you not really listening like, you know what I'm saying y'all y'all write things and y'all don't really listen to what's going on y'all not really listening to what I'm saying like for the most part, um your single is a, a commercial for your album, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying it's mm -hmm. the advertisement that your album is coming out, mm -hmm. you know so I have huge singles and you know singles are not the m deepest things in the world they're singles you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying they 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 the, they get the most attention for a record so. But they don't hear track 13, track 11, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have that single, but it plays so much that they think that's the whole Jay-Z persona. That's exactly. everything Jay-Z about is this one song right here, but it's uh, much The Reasonable more. Doubt album, of course. Mm -hmm. What was your mind state? I wasn't, I wasn't about uh, music, like, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't mm -hmm. about music with me. I was a guy that's fresh off the street who had a talent who didn't know. Like, I didn't know for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like, people like, yo, you nice. I'm be like, okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go, yeah, really. I'm going to go do this. You know what I'm saying? So I was really running the streets. Like, I was really just doing that for my for my people, like, for my friends and people that went through the same thing, like, all the way. Like, I don't know nothing about making a song or nothing about radio. I ain't know nothing about music. You, you know, I came in this game, like, with, I just learned it. You know what I'm saying? So I was, I was just making songs for my people to vibe to. Like, I was talking about things that we was going through, and if they was cool with it and they liked it, I was good. You as an MC, you're in it, like, mad long, because I, I read, a, I believe it was in the vibe that you did, did a demo with Kane, like, back in the day. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. MC has, they know you from yeah. the jazz, of course, and a lot of other and that, things. And that's so. the thing that balanced it out. Like, they know I've been uh, in and out, you know, dabbling with it forever. You know what I'm saying? As long as they can remember, as long as in a lot of people that's in the game, you know what I'm saying? So they got to respect it on a, on a, on a, on that level. And, you know, I sell records commercially, so the, the whole thing's come together. But, um, like now, you know, my song-making ability, you know, it matured. Like, it, it, you know, I got better at making songs, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That, that's why I still maintain. But that guy back there, I wouldn't want no problems with him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The last one, uh, <laughs> Blueprint. Part two, yeah, the gift and the curse, yeah. You explain that concept. Um, it, it's just like showing both sides of um, 
of life like it's real like people think that once you're an artist like that's it mm-hmm. like you cool everything is good shut up mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. is great like you don't feel pain no more like you superman but you know artists are just human beings you know what i'm saying with who, with a talent i was just showing them both sides my talent is a gift you know what i'm saying but it brings a lot of negativity so that's a curse also mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just was showing both sides of it. And with the album, I just was trying to be creative. I just wanted to show, you know, um, people in hip-hop, you can make any type of music. You can make a rock song with Lenny Kravitz or, or dip. you can make any, it's all out music. You know what I'm saying? Because when I made Blueprint, it seemed like everybody started making those types. So I didn't want for people, everybody to make that same song. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Hip-hop can't be one sound. It can't be one sound, and it's boring. It's monotone. It's, it didn't start out like that. Yeah, like. They, yeah. It's different sounds. Like you gotta do you. That's what it's about. Hip hop is rebel music. It's like, oh, everybody going left. I'm going right. You worked with a lot of people, of course, throughout your whole career. But on the last album, you have a song with some some people from Outkast. You know, mm-hmm. you got a lot of different things going on this album. And yeah. How was that working with those people and the different vibes? I mean, I, Kravitz, I, mean. It's, it, I always respect, like, I listen to all type of music, you know, I respect good music, you know what I'm saying? That's why I believe it's just good music and bad music, you know what I'm saying? I listen to uh You don't want to Outcast. categorize that stuff, yeah, like, yeah. put labels li- on it. I listen to Outkast, I listen to Talib Kweli, I, you know what I'm saying? I, as well as Scarface and Dr. Dre, you know what I'm saying? So... I, I just respect Outkast, you know what I'm saying, what they do creatively. I mean, that, like I said, everyone's going left. They said, I'm going to go right. Mm-hmm. And they're not doing it just to do it. They make good music doing it. You know what I'm saying? So it was just a beautiful thing to work with uh, Big Boy and uh, Killer Mike, as well as Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz, he writes, arranges, plays every instrument, and mm-hmm. writes all of his songs. I'm not going to respect that. You know what I mean? You got to mm-hmm. respect his creativity. You got to respect that. Just hearing about Jay-Z. Not even penning down his lyrics and yeah. just going straight into the studio. Yeah. And my man T, he told me about um that you you got that from just sitting on a bench, you know, doing your hustling on the streets and just yeah. not being able to write down your lyrics. Yeah. Is, is that true? That's how it happened. Like I used to write so much as a kid. Like growing up, I used to write so much. My mom was like, "Get away from that table." <laughs> like, you, like she thought I was crazy. I used to write every day, just write for hours mm-hmm. and hours and hours and hours. Um, so then when I just, you know, I stopped, it was, it was a time where it was like, it was like a, a, a period, like, you know, from when I was young until now, where I was just like lost. Like I would just run the streets just doing, you know, I'm, I'm in the neighborhood. I'm in Marcy Projects. That's mm-hmm. what everyone in the neighborhood was doing. So I was outside a lot. And I, you know, and you write that much, ideas will come to you every day. Like if you wake up eight o'clock, Every day, you won't need a clock anymore. Your mind, your body will tell you to wake up at 8 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Like, you just going to wake because, you know, it's natural. It's what your body's used to. So my body was used to creating all day, every day. So I had to just hold these ideas. I used to hold them. I used to put them on paper bag, put them in my pocket, and it was getting crazy. You know what I'm saying? I used to te- transfer them to the book. And then by, by memorizing it, so much to hold it until I got upstairs or when I got somewhere to write it down, I just start developing that talent. You know what I'm saying? And I just, since my first album, I never wrote lyrics. You're somebody that can take street culture and you're embodying hip hop and you just can market it the right way because you are it. You right. know what I'm saying? And then with the fashion and the movie, state property, for example. Yeah, well, you guys got to know that everybody wanted, like, everybody that's really interested and they want to really, like, from their heart, be a part of the culture. They gotta be afforded the opportunity. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not upset with nobody. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like, eh, how do you want to? Uh, they not. They not from New York. You know what I'm saying? Half mm-hmm. of my artists are not from New York. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I don't believe in that. I just believe in good. And, like I said, I believe in good and bad music. Like, and I believe in good and bad people. And I, and I just, and it's a huge world out there. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Okay, then. You order from Jay Z. Hier zo bij MTV. En uh, wat kan ik daar nog aan toevoegen? Thanks a lot, man. Yeah. Hey. See you later. This is the music factory.